This video is for people new to laser cutting or those that are curious about this tool. If you're more used to drawing your designs on paper, designing on a computer might be daunting. So I'll show you how to make this significantly easier. So let's get tinkering. The first thing we need to do is search for laser box designers on Google and you'll get lots of results. So let's have a look at some of the tools that are available, such as this gear designer, a marble maze designer that can make mazes of any size for any size marbles, jigsaw designers, and you could overlay your jigsaw on this so that you actually engrave your jigsaw, or even use the design with a fret saw. There are then designers focused around paper and card that will allow you to create many unusual shapes which you can then cut out using the laser cutter or just use scissors of course. And then there are designers to make open and closed boxes with as many sides as you want with div internal dividers, curved corners etc. And all these different resources are parametized so you can set exactly what size tabs you want, how large you want your boxes to be and all of the internal dimensions and number of dividers etc. This means you can focus your creativity on the features of your design rather than how all the bits are going to fit together. And then we come to boxes.py which has a huge number of different sorts of boxes, more than you could possibly even imagine and all of these again are parametized. So you just find something that looks close to what you want, perhaps you want something with a sliding drawer or a curved front or a timbre door and then you start from there and create the dimensions for the thing that you want. So the rest of this video is going to be about using one of these tools to create a card box for my favourite card game, Monopoly Deal. Now you have to consider with these images that because all of the boxes are parametized, they may not look like anything like what you want. So you have to sort of keep an open mind and think about does that box have the features that I'm looking for in order to make the thing that I want to make. Now in my particular case, the picture is very similar to what I want to actually make, which is great in terms of being able to identify it very quickly. What I'm after is a box that has a sliding lid, doesn't use any box furniture, but can close itself and stay closed and can hold effectively two packs of cards. So I've clicked on the appropriately named card box and there's a load of parameters here that I need to mess around with. These parameters allow you to do things like change the internal dimensions of the box, alter how many sets of cards this box is actually going to hold, change the depth of the box, the width, the height, and these can be either internal or external dimensions. It'll even let you alter the length of the tabs. So if you want the tabs to protrude so that you can sand them off, which I do, then there's a parameter for that as well. So I'm going to set up all of the parameters I need and we'll move on to the next stage. I'm going to do a quick preview using the preview button on the website. Have a quick look. Does it look about right? It does. So now I'm going to import this design into the 3D cutting software Lightburn. Now with it imported in Lightburn, I can see that there's a little problem here with how it's laid out the design. It's not very efficient with the wood use. So I'm just going to ungroup all the parts and then begin moving them around and rotating them to make most efficient use of the wood. Now this is for an old pack of Monopoly Deal and I want to be able to identify that on the box because I'm thinking I might make a few of these for different sets of cards that I've got and therefore what I want to do is engrave some Monopoly Deal graphics on the front of the lid so that I know which box I'm picking up. So I'm going to quickly search for a picture of the Monopoly Deal card box. I'm going to convert it to black and white and then I'm going to import it into Lightburn. You can see it's come in far too large so I'm just going to resize it and rotate it so it's at the correct orientation for this box. I'm going to place it in and then set all the settings needed so this will engrave properly. And that's pretty much it. I've used my design skills to decide exactly what I wanted and what features the box was going to have and the website has done all the hard work of actually drawing that box for me. I can now laser cut and engrave the box. Keep watching to the end to hear my final thoughts on using these design tools. 
So here I'm adding glue to all the parts using an old lollipop stick. I don't want to apply too much glue because I don't want too much squeeze out to deal with. The final stage now is just to sand the box to get rid of those horrible burn marks that you get from laser cutting so that the box looks less laser cut. And you can still see some of the burn marks you can't really avoid those. The only way to avoid those really is either to paint the box or to use a darker wood and then they'll begin to disappear. And if this is your first time here, my little channel is all about tinkering around in the workshop. It's not all laser cutting. Some of it's using a router, some of it's using a fret saw or a table saw or a band saw or even just hand tools. But basically just messing around in the workshop. And if you'd like to see more, then I invite you to subscribe. Subscription is completely free and sharing is really easy. Just click the share button and follow the instructions. And here's the finished box. Tell me what you think by leaving some comments or if you've got a question about the process of making stuff using the laser cutter, then let me know in the comments below. So here are my final thoughts on using online design tools as part of the 3D cutting process. Firstly, there are a lot of design tools out there and a lot of base models that you can use. And these base models can be refined much further using the parameters that each model has, sometimes fundamentally changing what that base design was like. Secondly, using these tools can save you a huge amount of time in the design process. And thirdly and finally, these design tools don't reduce the creative process. If anything, they increase the creative process by providing you lots of options and removing the barriers that you would otherwise have if you was trying to design these products from scratch. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.